Hello, in this video, I want to start a new series for the worker strike resolution. This is a resolution that I think will be really interesting with the amount of critical arguments that can be read and has a lot of ground to work off of. And so it's definitely somewhere that I wanted to make sure I covered as much ground as possible as quickly as possible so that you can have like as many resources as you need kind of going into it. Uh, I think that in this set of videos, what I really want to talk about is the worker strike and abolition. I think that uh, the question of prisons and prisoners is a really, really potent question for the question of the worker strike at resolution because I definitely think that the way in which people are positioning and thinking about uh, what the worker strike is is really a question of whether or not you have access to like wage labor and I think that it's super super interesting to talk about like the way in which prisoners do or don't fit into um, that particular type of uh, definition and the way in which the creation of the worker strike as a set of rights can like basically forward a way of basically continue the carceral system and justifying it. And so in this video where I'm kind of just doing the intro to worker strike and abolition, I want to talk a little bit about what I think are some like the central arguments from like abolitionists, uh, praxis, or just from people that are kind of writing about like carcerality in general and its relationship to the question of the worker strike. And then talking a little bit about uh, the affirmative and the negative kind of like uses of this before we kind of get into like our usual kind of like more just script series versions of this which I think are all kind of like really important places to talk about I think that when I'm trying to figure out like just what are some of the central arguments that are really important to like making abolition work in this resolution is being able to make sure that there is a definitive way to talk about like the history of worker strikes and how worker strikes have been defined and being able to basically talk about the concept of human rights as it relates to carcerality and being able to explain those ties as making it necessary for the affirmative to exclude prisoners from its ability to consider worker strikes and then thinking about the way in which that kind of level of theorizing and organizing basically creates the uh, foundation for the type of violence that uh, is basically continued under carcerality from various sectors and thus is not something that the worker strike would be able to resolve and solve back for and so I definitely think that's probably a place where you want to start a lot of your central argumentation about the resolution as a whole I think that when you're thinking kind of like historically and at a literature based level like how has this kind of conversation been pertinent to like how we think about worker strikes I think that the first thing is that like prisoners because of the way in which prison labor is thought of as forced labor that's done as the result of punishment for a crime is not the same as receiving like workers uh, labor that they consent to do the difference between the worker and the prisoner is the consent to work in the first place prisoners are working as a part of punishment the like small forms of payment that they get uh, as a result of that work are just a form of exchange that are used in order to bolster and continue the inside of like the literal prison system right well comparatively if you then look at that from like what you think of as a human rights kind of like framework for like what the resolution is saying we should do in the context of like worker strikes is that it's saying that the state should recognize the ability for workers to strike as basically a human right and the secondary kind of portion of the topic that I think a lot of abolition takes up problems with and which you can use on the affirmative and negative is like why that human rights framework is something that requires is like the continuation of the prison system right so the way that the kind of like human rights system works is that one that consents to be governed i.e one that consents to follow the law of the land uh is one that has bestowed the human rights of that land right and so if you are able to consent to follow the uh, law that is happening around you, then there uh, is going to be a, an ability for you to access the human rights that the country like sets out as like just the base rights that people deserve to access. But once you break the law or once you are imprisoned, those rights are able to be stripped away as punishment for the crime. And so not only does that mean that the worker strike like at a definitional level like requires the exclusion of like uh prisoners as like consenting wage laborers but also it requires basically the framing of a human right that is ne necessarily stripped away because of the way in which the prison system justifies the stripping away of human rights and the breaking down of like access to human rights and so i definitely think that because of this kind of like core set of issues with this, the framing of the resolution you had a lot of room to work with on the affirmative and the negative i think that when you're looking at the affirmative side of things I definitely think that there are so many good arguments to make about like why starting with abolition and a refusal of state recognition as the locus of like what our resistance looks like is important for like how we are able to frame an, a response to uh, capitalism, a response to violence, a response to carcerality that is outside of like the legibility or the frame of human rights because of the way in which human rights kind of like serves as a, an ability to like make people fold follow into the law while simultaneously using it as a, fe a vector of like punishment that is able to separate others from 
constitutional law. I think that additionally on top of that, some of the other arguments that are kind of like necessary in order to really see this work on the negative is your ability to really uh, pin down good competitive alternatives with the affirmative. I feel like the really advantageous thing about the uh, abolition critique on this uh, resolution is that it works really well as a pick argument to a lot of the stuff that uh, teams will be reading as advantages to the worker strike affirmative. I think that outside of the kind of like global democratic modeling type of arguments that teams will make that I think abolition has really good responses to when you think about like the concept of abolition democracy, when you think about all of the indicts of like these kind of like glamorizations of globalized warfare that don't talk about like domestic violence those are all really good places to situate like advantage based like arguments but additionally i think that your alternative against a lot of the soft left versions of these apps that are like anti-capitalist that are really invested in the value of the worker strike itself you have a lot of like places to move off of in terms of why starting with abolition and like a prisoner's kind of like uh resistance or uh form of resistance that centers along the proletariat does a lot more to kind of disturb the way in which we're thinking about uh carcerality in its relationship to capitalism and just our thoughts about like the kind of like Marxist idea of the wage labor in the first place. I feel like there are so many interesting debates to be had about how black revolutionaries and people that have been kind of like theorizing about the place that prisoners in the uh, lump and lower class kind of like serve in a uh, revolution have disagreed with like a uh, very traditional Marxist on the way in which we think about like class relations and the way that they perpetuate each other. And so I think that there are a lot of ways to talk about not just a uh, differentiation and like solvency and starting points, but also a differentiation in the organizational structure towards like what we are trying to resist and the problematics that you're taking with from the affirmative from its like core thesis uh, value arguments all the way down to like the actual advantages and like material implications of the plan which i think allows you to have a really multi-layered strong critique of the uh, affirmative while still giving you the option on the affirmative side to really develop a strong method that's important and really central to how we think about the resolution because it's really important to kind of like redefine how we're thinking about the role that the state plays especially in the context of what we define as a worker strike and why we use human rights as a framework to legitimize standards of resistance and i think being able to kind of like stigmatize those things allow you to have like a really strong affirmative argument off the bat hopefully this video is helpful as an introduction to worker strike and abolition and hopefully you'll be ready for the rest of the videos i'll be doing talking about the worker strike and abolition yeah thanks for tuning in